thousands. Uh, calling to order the personnel committee meeting December 9th, 2020. Um, our first agenda item is approval of minutes. Can I get a motion? I move to approve the minutes. Thank you. Any questions, comments, discussion from anyone? Thank you again for well-written, comprehensive minutes. Much appreciated. Uh, ready to vote. All in favor? Is aye. 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 Did we hear from Tom? Aye. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, I skipped. Oh, the next is public appearances for non-agenda items. I'm presuming we have no one. Okay, then we'll move on to our main and only agenda item is one update to the employee policies and procedures manual update to the vacation carryover policy 3.23.3. And that'll be Sarah. So as you recall, in our last personnel committee meeting, we brought to you um, the approval of carryover of up to 180 hours of vacation or comp for FMLA events. Um, one of the things that we did when we took that uh, new policy in and put that into the employee handbook is we took away the administrator's ability to approve additional vacation carryover um, beyond the 40 hours a week. Um, and I remember Gabriella bringing up, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure you want to take away that? administrator's ability to, to approve that on a case-by-case -case basis. And at the time it made sense, we, we thought, okay, this is good. The only time that additional vacation time will be carried over is an FMLA event. Well, here we are at the end of the year. We've, we have multiple staff that due to um, engineering, for example, we didn't have a transportation engineer for several months. So they had no ability to use vacation time or very limited ability. We had uh, elections, our clerk staff. Um, assessing went through quite a quite a year this year and are in the same boat. So um, what we're hoping to do is simply just add in the same language that we had in before, where it basically allows for the city administrator to approve additional vacation carryover beyond 40 hours, but on a case-by-case -case basis. So, um, you know, it, it's not going to be super common by any means, but it would be something where, at least in these instances, we don't have staff basically going into the new year and um, forfeiting all of this vacation time. So we don't want to penalize our hardworking employees. So that's really the only update. It's one of those things where, you know, you, you make a change and you think it's good and then you realize, oh, wow, what did we just do? So um, I just want to apologize that I had to bring this back to you this month. So um, a good reminder to slow down and really think about some of the changes before I present them to you. So. Any questions about that? Gabriella or Tom? You're muted. I'm muted. Uh, I'd make a quick comment that I, I think it's a great change, uh, especially in the context of the pandemic. And I think flexibility is always nice because there's always edge cases that come up that um, it's nice to have the flexibility. So uh, I fully support this change and uh, yeah, thanks for bringing it forward. Thank you. Tom? Um, sure. from you? Can you hear me, Sarah? Yep, um, I can hear you. The question I have is, I know how this works, and staff goes like you have, what would you tell me, what was the maximum, like 180 hours or how many hours was that? Yeah, it was 180 combined hours of vacation and comp time for an FMLA event in the year. So this would be completely separate from FMLA events. So this would be, for example, an engineer that didn't get to use any of their time because basically they've taken on the, a vacancy and all the workload that goes with that vacancy. Um, so it would be a, a separate from FMLA events. Is the rest of the employees in the city treated like then or is this just uh, help me out there yeah so the employee handbook addresses this is primarily for non-represented employees um, represented employees have their contracts and and the 180 hours for fmla was approved for represented as well um, but really what we're trying to do is just get this back in which we had before 
Um, you know, in the past, I think we did have represented employees email the city administrator about potential carryover, but usually it was due to an FMLA event um, and not necessarily um, workload. But, um, you know, I don't know, Misty, do you want to, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, my understanding is that this is prim primarily been for non-represented employees um, and that any deviations from the contract usually have to go through an MOU. Exactly. Yeah. So a contract really restricts and sets the game for all of the represented staff. So this would be for the non-represented staff and a very few circumstances where this is needed, but every, you know, every year there's at least one thing that comes up that this clause would help. And so we've had it in the past. It's been very well received by those employees that had been working really hard because of a vacancy or something else um, so that they have at least a little bit of flexibility. And the couple of requests I have now, assuming this is approved, um, we're putting on a cap. So it has to be used in the first quarter of the year so that there's at least, an, you know, trying to get them to use that piece up because then they can use the rest of their new vacation during the rest of the year. And is there a max? We're not, we're not going to have 15 year employees that have never taken a vacation and now they want it all paid out, right? <laughs> well, that's, hang on to that thought, Dorothy. Um, all I'm saying is, is there, Misty, is there a maximum where an employee, 180 and that's it? Um, because what happens is, or some people can, is it, can anybody exceed more than 180 hours or give me the maximum? Can anybody exceed that? Or is that it once you get to 180, it has to be used or whatever. Is there a maximum? Is there a level at the top where it maxes out? Do you mean the vacation schedule versus the carryover piece? I think the vacation I'm schedule. I'm talking about yeah. both or yeah, I'm talking about this carryover. So carryover right now is open-ended. Uh, so it would be dependent on what is reasonable for the specific case. I think the most that I have being requested right now is two weeks, um, which would be 80 hours. Um, but this was all pre the policy being approved. So maybe once this is approved, there'll be others that are requesting it. But right now there's no cap. Okay, that's where I'm going. There's no cap on this at all uh, for the employee? He, you can go up to X amount of hours or whatever they want to? With that? For the carryover, yes, there's no current, there's not currently a cap in the policy that's in front of you. You guys are welcome to add a, a cap if that's something the committee is interested in doing. Since the time you and Sarah have been here, was there ever a cap under previous administration, under previous mayors? Was there ever a cap? Not that I'm aware of, not at all. Um, the language in there was just that the city administrator would be able to evaluate that on a case-by-case -case basis as far as how much would be allowed to be carried over. And typically, in my time here, uh, Pat would approve it for to be used within the first you know, quarter of the next year. Okay. Um, so put a cap on when they had to use that additional okay. vacation. Okay. I'm, I'm not trying to be devil's advocate as much as I'm just trying to clarify this. In other words, if the city administrator... Think about this for a minute. If the city administrator can okay somebody in the highway department with 40 hours and then somebody in the parks comes along and they get denied, how are we, how are we balancing this off? Uh, you're giving a, a whole lot of power to the city administrator and I don't know if we want to, I don't know if I want to go there. Um, it, you're, you're just opening up a, a big box here. One person can say, well, it's okay for him, but it's not okay for her. Now, I'm trying to clarify that. Is there a way we don't have that problem? Um, if an administrator doesn't like somebody, they can say, nope, can't have it. Nope, you got to use your, you have to use it by December 31st. Um, can you tell I used to work for the city? Can you tell? Can you tell? Can you tell? Um, is there a way to clarify this a little more? Um, I mean, you, I don't like this administrator just okaying it. Is, uh, is, how can we get around that curve? Well, just for your information, for the, the last couple of years, every single request was approved and it was only maybe five every year. So five in the two years that I've been here, five one year, five the other year. Um, 
you know, we can add parameters into this policy if, if we want the city minister in, in collaboration with the finance director or with the HR manager, or, I mean, we can have multiple people approving it, or we could um, identify, okay, we're always going to allow carryover as long as they use it in the first quarter and it's under 80 hours. You know, we, we can certainly add those parameters in if the personnel committee would like that um, rather than giving the full discretion to the city administrator. The other thing I'd like to add, if I may, is this policy would be in addition to the regular vacation carryover that we have right now in the manual up to 40 hours or one week is allowed to be carried over just by practice doesn't really need anybody's approval because it's been approved by the personnel committee as an automatic. So this would just be for those more unusual circumstances where something is unique about that year that didn't allow them to be able to use their vacation. Sarah, you said there was never a problem with the administrator or there was never a problem with people carrying it over or do you know of any um, that was denied? In the last, you know, in the two years that I've been here, every request that I've seen come through has always been approved. So um, I've never seen a denial for additional carryover um, on that case by case basis. Gabriella, you had your hand up. Yeah, I mean, I really appreciate Tom's concern for uh, for like fairness in the employees. I guess the my my preference is to keep the flexibility, just because I think when we put really specific guidelines, there's always something that comes up that doesn't fit the guidelines, and so I wonder maybe as an alternative to actually amending this particular policy, is it possible to have kind of a laid out set of guidelines that the administrator uses, kind of maybe not like in the official handbook, but something that both the HR director and the administrator can agree on as uh, like, I like, for example, it sounds like the typically the recommendation to use that time in the first quarter is, is something that's typically done. So that's sort of an unwritten rule. Uh, but I wonder if there's just some criteria, you know, as to the number of hours that can be rolled over when it can be used uh, and, you know, wh what the cases are for, uh, for rejecting the, the complaint, the request that are sort of used, but then potentially could be waived uh, in particular circumstances. Because I have to imagine that there might be some sort of request that comes up that you would let them use it, let them use that time later in the year versus the first quarter if there was some particular circumstance that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, a, a <laughs> grandfather's 70th birthday that you want to go to uh, in mm -hmm. July and you want to- Or family expansion. Yeah. And I'm going to want eight weeks off because I care that much to, so yeah, I would see that as one way that people might use extended vacation. Um, how much for, for full-time people, how, how, how many days or weeks or hours or however it's measured are people typically getting in a year? I know, I know it says in here, the number of hours that, could, that a week consists of, but how many weeks is it that they get? Yeah, so it all depends on their length with the, the city. So if someone's starting out, and it also depends on their FLISA status, so if they're exempt or not exempt, but let's say a non-exempt employee um, less than five years, they earn two weeks, so 80 hours. Um, someone with five years of completion who's not exempt would be at the 120 hours. Um, our exempt employees start out at 120 hours versus the 80 hours. So we have that difference there. So anywhere from, you know, two to, what is that, three and a half weeks? I mean, it goes all the way up to 220 hours uh, for someone with 25 years or 200 hours for someone with 20 years. Let's just say it's yet. It goes up to 25 years, 220 hours. Thank you. Yep. I think I'm happy to leave this as it's worded, but ask Sarah to put together a guideline. Sarah and Misty maybe um, put together a guideline for the administrator to kind of help sort out um, what's acceptable without question and what might be pushing it. Because I, I, I do know a lot of people that just flat out don't take vacation time. 
and if they were allowed to continue to save it up until retirement, they're going to get two years of paid time off, okay? And I definitely don't want that to happen. Okay. That is no problem. We can certainly put a guideline together. I can work with Misty um, and put something together. Would you guys like to see it at the next personnel committee meeting and we can just share that with you or? I'd say sure. Okay. Yeah. Either that or an email, if um, oh, I have sure. no problem with it just being kind of a communication in the okay. background. But certainly willing to hear, you know, any sort of additional feedback from town. The other thing I like about not being specific about it is I do think that when people are required to specifically request something, mm -hmm. they typically don't do that unless they feel like they have a reasonable request. Whereas if there was like specific guidelines where it's like, if you meet these these guidelines, you're that's it. Um, then it's much easier for people to, I don't know, maybe think they would, wouldn't think twice about doing it because they know that it's going to be approved no matter what. So it puts a little bit more onus on the employee to make sure that they're making a, a reasonable request uh, when they want to carry over that time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Tom. Um, I want to make it clear. I'm not against a carryover. I just, I, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not against that at all. Just remember two things, Dorothy already brought it up. If you could have an employee that, you know, wants a carryover because maybe they're going to Europe or they're going out of the country after all this pandemic gets over, you know, but they're going away or they're, they're saving it up for, I, I understand that, I get that. You want to remember that if they get up to two or 300 hours or whatever, Dorothy hit it, you're paying them out. The city's paying these people out. And um, you kind of want to encourage them for also their state of mind to use their vacation. Um, I can't tell people what to do on their vacation. I can't do that. But you want to kind of tell them to use it. Um, I know there was a maximum. I thought there was a maximum when I worked for the city. There was like 180 hours. That's all you could get. And what happened then to the employee, you'd have to use it. You know, you used it as you went. You tried to use it. Um, you could only get so many hours. And um, I just think that I don't like the administrator or being the sole keeper of it. Like we said, if Misty um, or Sarah want to do just a few guidelines or something, that's fine. I'm good with that. But... I don't want, I just think maybe there wasn't a problem. And you know what? I don't want it to be a problem. Especially, well, especially with the administrator situation we have going now. So we just don't want it to be a problem. And that's my thought. That's my only thought. And if you guys want to come up with two or three things and share it later, don't hold up the process. I'm not trying to do that. But, um, that's that's what I think about it. So. Do you do you think everyone would be open to approving the policy change, but with the understanding that we would be working on a guideline that we would send to you within the next few weeks? Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, one thing that I'd like to see included in it, um, city administrator approval, um, but with HR directors approval as well okay. yeah i like the idea of maybe specifying that hr director is involved so that because that, that i think sort of fixes the problem of a future person future administrator maybe not liking a particular person and rejecting it but if the hr director had some sort of involvement in the decision as well even if it was just an awareness of the request maybe that would potentially solve any sort of future theoretical problem How how would you guys feel about adding um, that into this language, the red line language? Um, read unless the employee has received city administrator and HR director approval. Mm -hmm. How? Yeah, that's. I got to go back to what Gabriel said. I. Uh, 
I'm leaning towards you. I, I get it. I'm leaning towards you. But here's the deal. What if you got a split vote there? What if you got a administrator that says okay and Sarah says no? Do you ask Misty? That was, but if we have that a was, guideline. That was a joke. I, I didn't mean that. But, I mean, I, I'm not... What if there's a split? What... And you know what's going to happen. I can already see what's going to happen on that. I like your idea. I'm not against the idea. But the administrator is going to probably say one thing, and then Sarah's going to give in because the administrator's her boss. Don't answer, Sarah, just for a second. <laughs> but, um, you know... Um, I'm not, I don't know, it, what do you think, Sarah, is it, do you think there's going to be, is that, is that, if it's easier for you, I'm fine with it, I don't, I just yeah. trying to not have a problem. I don't, I don't think there'll be any problem if there's a guideline, because the guideline then dictates, here's the criteria, and this is how, how we know whether or not we approve it, so if okay. the administrator said, here's the guideline, and no, and, and I'm, I'm seeing that all of all of the bullets are, are clicked yes, and yeah, it, it points to this person should be allowed this carryover. And the administrator says no, then I mean, yeah, I guess there would be a conflict there, right? Because I'm not understanding, but I would I would communicate and try to get at why the administrator is saying no, and I, I would feel comfortable having that conversation. Um, I guess I would think that administrator would see that guideline and agree. Yep, they meet all the criteria. They're good to go. It would be a hard sell if we didn't, you know, if we didn't have a guideline, it'd be a different story. But if we have a guideline, that will be helpful. May I make a, a suggestion about maybe an alternate uh, change? If we say city administrator approval with HR director input. So it's not like both have to sign off, but at least there's like a check on the administrator's decision so that you know, we can double check that it's being a fair, it's a fair decision with a, with a second person. Tom? That's okay. Just, I think the two alders, you understand what I'm trying to say. I think you're going in the right direction where I'm going. That's, I'm just trying to clarify it. And, um, I was thinking about this today. Can you tell? And it, I mean, what you're saying is, uh, Gabriel, maybe input by the input by the HR director, or something like that, or input by the HR director. Do you want to add Misty? You don't have to, or just to make it. I don't. I don't want to keep adding people. I'm not trying to do that. Um, uh, that's fine. I'm good with that. Just it's kind of a checks and balance. That's all it is. Maybe I'll make a motion to add with input from HR director after uh, city administrator approval in that change. Uh, be careful with that. He'll already, he or she would already make a decision and then it kind of puts the HR director in a real Pandora's box because he's already made a decision. You with me? He's already made a decision. So I think you want to make sure that the HR director has a say in it before their decision's made. Mm, okay. I guess I just, I, I guess I okay. was thinking that in terms of how it's worded, that I guess that wording to me implies that that decision is being made, that conversation is happening before the approval happens. Tom, are you kind of suggesting that employees should go to the HR director first and then? How about no, I didn't really mean it that way. I, you know, I guess, all How right, about, let's run down that scenario. I can do it quick. Just so an employee can't use a vacation, they go to the administrator, or first they go to their department head and say, hey, I'd like to take 40 hours over. I couldn't use this. So the, Misty, tell me if I'm wrong. The HR, the department head says, yep, that's fine. Run it through the administrator. So then they go to the administrator, and that's where I'm trying to get little input from the HR director with the administrator. 
Is that kind of the process you're using, Sarah? Did I say that right? Yeah, the employee is emailing the city administrator, um, and it's really just an email chain. Um, and the administrator then responds back with um, the response to HR and payroll. And then that's that's kind of how the chain is done. Okay, I'm with you. I'm sorry. I, there's a step there that I, I missed then because there's no, tell me if I'm wrong, there's no HR, there's no department head in there. Right. So the employee actually, goes right to the good. administrator. So let's have the administrator, as I think the other two alders, I think we're on the same page, just have a like one, two, and three guidelines, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and to make them, to make he or she follow it, I think is where we want to go. Does that sound right? I guess if I could just make a comment to be clear. So a guideline is a recommended practice, but if you want these to be enforceable, it would need to be part of the policy. So I'm just, I'm a little unclear if, if it really has to be a check all the boxes to say yes, then it should be part of the policy, not really a guideline. If it's a, these are kind of the, the things that would qualify, then a guideline makes a lot of sense. I just don't want you to be frustrated if somebody submits a request to me, it doesn't meet the guidelines, but I use my judgment to say, I think this should be allowed anyways. I wouldn't want a personnel committee to be frustrated because it, it didn't meet the guidelines. I personally think that the administrator should have some flexibility to make exceptions if, if it even doesn't fit this general guideline, but I like the guideline in terms of fairness so that there is like a typical, like these are the things that we're thinking of when we try to make the decision. And then, you know, like maybe there's a, a long-term employee that gets a lot of vacation that never uses their time, requests carry over every time. Maybe that's a scenario where the history precludes approval of it or create some sort of additional um, restrictions on how that time is used next year. But I like the, I, I personally like that flexibility just in case something comes up. And I, at that point, I, I think it can be a, a conversation between the administrator and the HR director, and it doesn't have to involve counsel at all um, in terms of if it's in the policy and you wanna go against the policy, then it, then it becomes a whole thing. <laughs> Whereas if it's, if it's your own guidelines just to like ensure fairness, um, but I do kind of like, maybe I could suggest like an alternate wording, maybe say, so from the red section, unless the employee has received approval from the city administrator in consultation with the HR director, director to carry over more than one work week. So that implies that the approval comes from the city administrator, you know, at, after consulting with the HR director. Um, so I, I think that does also imply that the city administrator makes the decision, but the HR director just gets input so that kind of like clarifies the fairness aspect so that more than one person is involved. Yeah, I like that wording. Thoughts, Tom? I, I think we're saying the same thing. Maybe I'm, I, I think the three alders are saying the same thing. I don't think there's any of us, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think all three of us are saying the same thing. How you do it's fine with me. I'm I'm good with that. I'm I'm okay with that. I just think there should be a little checks and balance. That's all I'm. That's where I'm going. That's all I'm saying. You know, and how you do it. I'm okay with that. Okay. Did, did you want to move that then, Gabriella? Mute it again. Muted. Got it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I would like to make a motion to do that. Should, should, Sarah, should I repeat the whole phrase with the motion? Yeah. I feel like you used it. Yeah, I've got it written out so that any vacation in excess of the one work week remaining, um, basically assuming it's your approval in consultation with the HR director. So I don't know if you want to say that or, um, I don't know. Do you want to say exactly what we're trying to change the policy to? Yeah, I can repeat what I had said before. I mean, yeah. do, we need, do we need to make an official, I assume we need to do an official motion. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so I move to amend the edited part of the vacation carryover policy to, to read, unless the employee has received approval from the city administrator in consultation with the HR director, the carryover more done on a
All right, and we don't, do not need a second before we vote for that. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's fine. All right, anything else on that? Um, no, thank you for the really thoughtful discussion and going through that. I think a guideline sounds really good, so thank you. Um, I just have one announcement. Um, in January, I'm going to be um, helping out with a city mass, and they're having an equity, equity tool on their position study and classification process. So um, they've asked a few external members and then other um, members of the other city divisions to kind of basically um, look at how they classify positions, go through a position study process, and just look at um, you know ways to do that uh, through an, looking at it through an equity lens and just look for improvement. So I'm super excited to do that. Um, that starts in January. So it'll be a number of different focus uh, group meetings, all virtual, but um, that'll be really exciting. So that's all there I've will got. be compare and contrast for Fitchburg involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Congrats. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Anything else from anyone before we adjourn? And I will take a motion to adjourn. I'm over, German. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And again, thanks to FACT TV for great job bringing all of us together even while we remain apart. Yes. <laughs>